So I have never actually thought about buying a Mac Mini. It's just never ever been on my radar. That is to say until today. This thing, well, it's a hell of a lot different, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the show. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow. To my left here we have the brand new Apple Mac Mini with the new M1 processor. This thing is absolutely insane. In this video I'm going to tell you why it's so amazing, I'm going to show you how good it is and then ultimately we'll have a conversation about whether you should buy one of these or not because yeah it's really really good but this is a really really interesting and at the moment hot topic. So you can buy one of these on the site right now, a Mac Mini with the brand new M1 processor for around £700. That is the cheapest way currently, and I think all time, into the Mac ecosystem. Usually, well, they've held this really high price tag. Not anymore. Apple M1 comes across £600, bang, you've got yourself a Mac. For that £700, you're going to get yourself Apple's brand new shiny silicon, the M1 chip, and with this, coupled in our build here, is eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. To a PC guy, or let's call them a spec head, that really doesn't sound too impressive. But hold on there, because this thing is really, really impressive. So personally, the first thing I tried was a program called Premiere Pro. Now, a lot of you will have heard of it. It's a program from a company called Adobe that helps you edit video. Now when you install Adobe's Creative Cloud, which is the way you actually install the Adobe apps like Photoshop and, and Premiere Pro, there's on the new M1 Mac a huge beta logo in the top corner. We'll talk more about why these programs are in beta in just a second, but so far the numbers and the performance. How do these beta Adobe Suite programs run here on the Mac Mini? Well, amazingly, shockingly well, like insanely well. Remember, these programs, the Adobe Suite, still all in beta. I was able to throw 4K footage from our Sony A7 series cameras into a timeline and scrub through. Honestly, it was like butter. It was a breath of fresh air compared to some of the Windows PCs we have to use here in the office. Now I do want to throw you guys some numbers and some graphs, I know people like those. So here, 7 minutes and 31 to render our Premiere Pro timeline on the Mac Mini versus 12 minutes on our editing PC, which is a Windows based computer here in the office. It's about 5 times bigger than this Mac Mini and about 3 times the cost. Now back to that beta logo that's plastered all across the Adobe Suite. Why is the Adobe Suite in beta? Well basically, a name that you guys need to know is Rosetta 2. Now that is a software, a bit of software that is running on this Mac Mini and all Apple M1 devices that essentially converts all of the programs that have been designed for Intel Macs, the previous generation of Macs before Apple Silicon, to run on the new hardware. So it's literally a translation live of code. Now what does that mean? Well that means two things. The first one and the most important is that yes, the apps are running great on Rosetta 2, you wouldn't even know that the apps aren't optimized for this Mac Mini. Uh, number two, the apps aren't optimized for this Mac Mini. So that seven minute time scale that was better than our Windows PC on rendering the video is only going to get better when Adobe actually optimized for the M1 chips inside of these new Macs. This is all really, really good. The only apps that are actually optimized to run on this without Rosetta are apps that are made by Apple. Luckily enough, one of them is Final Cut Pro. It's an editing software that pretty much goes head to head with Adobe. I tried to mimic the exact same timeline that I had in Premiere Pro over in Final Cut just so I could render it out and see how much quicker an actual optimized app 4M1 would render out the video and I also did some tests versus my 16 inch loaded out MacBook Pro. This has 32 gigs of RAM versus 8 gigabytes uh, found over here and this also has a dedicated GPU inside of it. Okay, here's the graph, let's look at these results. 4 minutes 20 on the new M1 Mac Mini versus 5 minutes 40 on my older Intel based MacBook 
Pro on Final Cut export times. Now this again is both really good and really bad. Really good because the performance of this is great, really bad because this is going to piss a lot of people off that have spent over two and a half thousand pounds less than a year ago specking one of these up when this comes along and absolutely knocks this out of the park. Now, please bear in mind that there are tasks that having a dedicated GPU will run better on a MacBook Pro than this, but for what I'm doing, video editing mainly, this is really pulling through. So Alex, how is all this possible? How are you getting all this great performance at such a low cost? Surely there's some caveat somewhere along the line that you haven't said, surely there's some down fall somewhere. Surely there's something that is going to catch me out the blue when I least expect it. And no, to be honest, not really. I'd say it right here. The secret source, yeah, secret source is in Apple's brand new M1 chip. Now the chip basically replaces the old chips that Intel made for Apple in these devices. But the M1 chip is more than just a processor. It houses things like eight CPU cores as well as eight GPU cores and on the same chip is also the RAM, the memory for the computer. So having all this in one place, uniform, makes it really, really efficient. It means you can have a device like this that only has eight gigs of RAM but really well optimized versus a device that has 32 gigs of RAM but isn't that optimized be on the same playing field or in fact superior performance over here. Now I mentioned efficiency and obviously tied that with performance for the spec that we've got in here. It's really efficient so it's really powerful but it's also on top of that really power efficient and the thermals in this thing. It doesn't make any noise like when you're rendering video it's literally sat there quiet as anything. Okay the Mac Mini is currently rendering at 4k in Premiere Pro. Can you hear anything? So Alex, what you're saying is all seems really, really well. I should go ahead and buy one of these things right now. And hold on, we're going to talk about that at the end because this is a bit of a special product. But first, I just do want to brush over the hardware. So all the ports on the back will start left to right. You've got a power and one gig Ethernet. I would have liked to see 10 here. But then, covering up from that, you've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So you pretty much can plug anything into these. You can get uh, card readers, adapters, display adapters, straight into your Thunderbolt 3. You're going to be absolutely fine and then you've also got backwards compatible USB-A ports great for things like uh, USB dongles for your mice and keyboards. They also do throw on there an HDMI port and a headphone out if you would like to use these and not go through the Thunderbolt 3. Now the hardware of this thing really is its only downside and you say Alex hardware downside I thought you said this thing was really really powerful with the new M1 chip and don't get me wrong it is because that's what's in this thing now but hear me out here what's going to be in this thing in six years time well let me tell you exactly what's in it now because there is nothing about this computer that is upgradable you can't upgrade the RAM you can't put GPU in it you can't pretty much do anything to this computer it's going to be as it is now in six years time and I've said this before in videos, you give up the control of your system. That's what you're giving up. You're giving up the control, the ability to upgrade things yourself. And in return for that, you're getting a really tight silicone made by Apple, which is really, really efficient and really, really fast at a really good price. So Alex, are you sitting here recommending the Mac Mini? Should I buy one or should I wait? And my honest answer to that is I think you would not have a problem buying one of these right now. A lot of people have asked me, Alex, what is the compatibility like with Rosetta 2? Are all of my apps that I know and use going to work while I wait for developers to release their own M1 versions of the app? And I wouldn't worry about that. This is Apple, biggest company in the world. Developers are going to hop on this new M1 chip. Look, I think Macs are made for a certain type of person or are made for a certain type of job. If you were sat there saying, Alex, what should I get to play all my games on? I wouldn't sit here and recommend you a Mac Mini. This Mini is for a creative, somebody that does video editing, somebody that does photo editing, a designer, somebody that maybe just wants a, a computer that's quiet and lightweight and efficient to sit there and web browse, or maybe even just put this in a server rack and have it as a media streaming PC for your home cinema. This is the target demographic for this computer. And does it do all of those jobs well? Well, 
yeah, in my testing, it's completely blown me away. Should you get one? You know what? I think it's great, and I ain't sending it back. But for now, guys, that's my review of the Mac Mini. If you have any more questions, let us know down there below, because like I say, it's in-house, it's in the studio. My name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Well, the end of the world. <laughs> 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 <laughs>